Hi Titans, thank you for joining us. My name is Jennifer Wheeler and I'm the project manager in the Dean of Students office and I am back again with another webinar for you. At our last webinar we talked about Directive 21 which contains information about Cal State Fullerton's plan to keep our campus as safe as possible during this time. As you know we're mostly virtual but we do have some in-person classes and today I'm joined by two associate vice presidents and we're going to tackle all of your academic related questions. The Dean of Students office has been monitoring your emails, our phone lines, and our social media accounts to find all of your academic related questions. So thank you so much for sending those into us. Please continue to talk to us about your questions and concerns. We're committed to getting you the information that you need. And this webinar is just one example of that. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to our AVP so they can introduce themselves. All right, I'll go ahead and introduce myself first. My name is Vincent Behill and I serve as the Associate Vice President for Student Affairs and Dean of Students. And I'm Mark Filowitz. I'm Associate Vice President for Academic Programs. That covers undergrad, grad, GE, the honors program, first year experience, the scheduling office, and anything else people can think of. Yeah, that's a lot. These are two of CSUF's experts, one from Student Affairs, Dr. V. Hill, and one from Academic Affairs, Dr. Filowitz. And honestly, I believe in order to have a successful semester, you need a good combination of both. So I'm really excited to have them both here with me today. I wanna give a quick overview of this webinar. We're gonna have Dr. Filowitz start us off with a general review of CSUF's academic plans for the semester. And then Dr. Vigil and I are gonna take turns asking Dr. Filowitz all of your questions. And actually, Dr. Vigil may chime in and jump, some, and jump in and answer some of your questions if they have any student affairs pieces in them. So Dr. Filowitz, go ahead and take it away with our overview of the fall academic plans. Thanks very much. Um, so back in the fall, um, in the spring rather, we, we really uh, had to pivot very quickly uh, as the pandemic hit, but we got a lot better organized during the summer. Uh, we have a, a, a re-entry leadership team that uh, Dr. Vigil and I head up uh, with experts in all the areas. And we were able to go forward to the chancellor's office with a plan to put forward a number of courses uh, that could be still done in person, courses generally that require special equipment or require actually hands-on uh, work to get the uh, course actually accomplished. So we started out with 239 courses that actually were approved to, to go in person. Um, and that actually came down from 239 to about 168 as faculty figured out ways to do things virtually, uh, sometimes out of fear of coming to campus because you know, there were a lot of unknowns back in, in uh, a few months back. So uh, we were able to actually get a lot of classes to be uh, converted to virtual modality. I should mention over 3,000 faculty participated in, uh, in learning how to do virtual instruction better over the summer. And uh, we want to tell you a little bit about what the type of modes are because that's sometimes confusing. Um, you know, generally when you're going uh, in a virtual mode, you can have an asynchronous modality, which means it's basically you can look at this stuff at any time. Uh, but when it's synchronous, it means there are a given time, just like when you had classes in person. So you need to look at that in the class schedule to make sure that it works with what you want to do. Many people like the asynchronous because it allows them flexibility if they're still working or if they have other classes to fit in, uh, whereas the synchronous is pretty well fixed. So um, again, we have about 168 courses, which represents about one and a half percent or less of our usual course offerings for about 11,000 courses in the fall. And um, so there's, there's really um, some responsibility that goes with those coming to campus uh, in terms of the protocols that were laid out in Directive 21 that you heard about, I think, last time. And in those classes, it's, it's basically a question of, of what we prepare for you. We only have three buildings open compared to the normal bevy of buildings that we have. And we have uh, our staff going in in the morning and in between classes, if there's at least 15 minutes in between, to clean down and dis uh, disinfect areas. Uh, we have signage all over the place about you know, how close or not close you are to get to folks. Uh, we know the usual things in terms of your, your personal sanitary uh, conditions that you wanna keep and washing hands, wearing a mask, and all those things are things that we expect you to do. And the faculty also have their restrictions. They will have some space um, in those in-person classes to have some space in the front of the room about 20 feet and all the students will be separated by at least six feet and all the seats have been marked in those classrooms. So we've thought of everything we can to try to make it as safe as possible. And um, that also includes how we direct traffic. Um, I will remind you though, if you're coming to campus, you'd still need a parking permit or at least a one day pass. Thank you for that overview. It's helpful to frame the conversation. So I'll get us started with our first question. 
if I have in-person classes, what do I need to do to stay safe? Well, I could take that question, Jennifer. Um, so one of the things that we talked about in the last uh, webinar was President's Directive number 21. And so that is a directive that we've created as a campus to mitigate you know, health and safety risks, right? So it's COVID-19 mitigation measures and guidelines. So in that particular directive, um, Dr. Philowitz went over some of the aspects of it, but one thing that I really wanna highlight from it is the use of face coverings. So it's very important for us to continue to wear face coverings um, when we get onto campus. So that includes in your classroom, that includes if you do happen to reserve a space in the library. Um, if you are happening to have some food or drink, you know, you could minimally remove that that face covering for a minimal amount of time, um, but we do ask that you keep that face covering on throughout your entire time here at Cal State Fullerton. So that's one important aspect of it. Um, Dr. Filowitz talked about that the classrooms, they will be indicated in terms of um, physical distancing. So, you know, there will be some particular tables and chairs that will be marked off um, to maintain physical distancing. Um, we are asking that before you come to campus that you give yourself a health screening. Um, so you can find that on the CDC website. Um, you could also find it on our coronavirus website for Cal State Fullerton. But it's basically just looking at certain and symptoms that maybe you have um, or don't have. And if you do have some of those symptoms, then we do ask that you stay home and get yourself checked um, in terms of having coronavirus or not. One thing that is very important that is mentioned in that president's directive is reporting. So if you happen to have symptoms and you do happen to test positive for COVID-19, we do ask that you let us know. So if you have an in-person class and you happen to test positive, please let us know that you have tested positive because what we want to do is we want to alert um, any individuals that maybe you've come in contact with or people in your classroom to let them know that somebody has possibly been um, exposed to the coronavirus. Um, so that's important. The opportunity for you to indicate whether or not you've tested positive is also on the coronavirus webpage. All of this, if you've had in-person classes, should have been emailed to you from myself. So I emailed all of the students that have in-person classes um, in the beginning of the semester. And I also followed up, I think this past week, again, just to remind you of President's Directive number 21 and all of these different mitigation measures for you to consider. Um, so please continue to look at signage, as Dr. Filowitz said, that's all around campus. Um, but we want to make certain that you are healthy and that you are safe while you're here at Cal State Fullerton. So I hope that answers your question, Jennifer. Right, and in terms of places to study on campus, uh, that is a question that we've heard frequently. Um, so I'll, I'll launch into that if it's okay. Uh, you know, typically we have about 40,000 students on campus uh, at any given time. Uh, we're down to about 2,700, but nevertheless, um, as you know, most of the campus is equipped with Wi-Fi through Edge of Rome, but not all areas of campus. So uh, you have to use that. And if you can, use the outdoors. Uh, we have lots of nice seats that we've placed all over campus. Um, where Wi-Fi is available. And uh, if you need a place to study, you can make two hour reservations at the Pollock Library. They have to be made in advance. Uh, and on the, uh, re the Titans Return website that uh, Dr. Vigil mentioned, um, there's a way to actually get that very easily. Uh, all the computers have been removed. The classes, of the tables have been wiped down and disinfected. And um, these are one person tables that are gonna be set up again, Monday through Friday from uh, approximately uh, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. You can get a two-hour reservation. There'll be um, a community service uh, person that will be there checking uh, to see that you got the reservation. You can have it on your mobile device or any other way that you want to bring it. And uh, no food or drink is allowed in the library. Uh, and anyway, if you're going to eat, you should be eating outdoors because you're going to take off your mask. You better be outdoors. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we're not. We're not policing this to say, um, you know, we're, we're counting on students to be responsible adults and to do what they have to do. Um, but we are trying to provide as much place as possible for students to get their work done. Thank you both. That's really helpful. I'm going to shift gears a little bit. Our next question is, what should I expect from a virtual class? Well, in terms of the quality of instruction, we expect you to get the same thing you would get in any other uh, type of modality. But um, this also depends on how individual instructors have set things up. As I said, some could provide you with uh, recorded lectures uh, and then have question and answer periods afterwards. Uh, some will provide the, uh, the ones that are synchronous actually doing it with you and be there as they're doing it um, live. 
Um, so there's different ways to do it, but it has to be very clear in the syllabus that they give you as to what the modality is. And you can usually check that um, when you go onto your uh, registration websites to see what the syllabus was in the class, because those are listed on the, on the websites. And um, they all offer um, office hours. So there's always follow-up that you can have with the professors during their scheduled office hours. They have to have office hours, it's required, it's part of our university policies. Um, and they also respond to email. Um, and if you wanna get a hold of them through email, that's another good way to do it. All of you will either be on Canvas or Titanium, or whichever one that you've migrated into or out of. Canvas is actually, I hear, easier to use. Um, and that will be another way of, of directly dealing with your instructors and uh, getting your instructions on what you do in terms of assignments. Um, and sometimes that will be in a faster way than email uh, to go back and forth uh, with your instructors. So active participation uh, doesn't mean just looking at the content. If you, uh, a, lot of, a lot of students in, in the university sometimes don't, they sit there in class and don't participate, which means you're not getting the full experience. And that's true whether it's a, a, a virtual modality or if it's an in-person modality. So you're encouraged to be very involved with your assignments, discussions, um, and, and working and acting in fact with, with study groups that you might form through the class. That's always very effective. And, and I know there will be tutoring offered in, in online in many of the colleges. And uh, also um, you can get a lot of advisement directly online through the, either the Academic Advisement Center or the colleges and their success teams. So I have a, a question to follow up with that. Will professors take attendance for virtual classes? Well, they can. Um, and, you know, even, even in some of the large classrooms we had in person, some folks didn't do it. Some used clickers. Um, by going on to the website, there will be a recording of the fact that you're there. And again, it's how well you participate. Um, you should, uh, should go into your Titanium uh, site as often as possible, or Canvas, if you have that now. Um, that allows the professor to see that you're logged in and, um, and what you viewed and how long you were active. Um, additionally, professors might consider your active involvement in discussion. That's something that sometimes in syllabi that has part of how your grading structure works is class participation. And again, that's an individual decision by the professor that's teaching the course. Thank you. So we also had a lot of students contact us to let us know they're still struggling to use Zoom or other online tools that are required for their courses. Is there a place that these students can go to for help? Yeah, definitely. So I know we as staff and faculty, we're still struggling to handle Zoom also. So we appreciate the question. Uh, there are many resources available on Information Technologies website um, that you may have already used or you may not have already used. For example, you'll find a short tutorial on how to access and use Zoom on that website. Uh, you can also visit the Student Technology Services website to access free software. So there's a whole list of different software that you have access to as a Titan that you can easily, easily get. Um, so please look at the Student Technology Services website to access that. Um, you will also see a button on the Student Technology website um, for email and Titan apps, and that will provide you with directions on how to get started um, with that. Um, you could also contact the Student IT Help Desk, either via email or even through chat, and they will be able to help you navigate some of the Zoom complexities, but also um, any of the new technology or um, software that you've downloaded. So I hope that that's, that's helpful. And so I have a question for you, Dr. Philowitz. If my class is synchronous and my professor requires us to attend live virtual classes, do I have to keep my camera on? Well, well it, it's encouraged and it has to be specifically laid out in the syllabus. Um, I can tell you, you know, I, I like to watch a lot of sports and I watch these sports now with, with uh, nobody in the audience. And I know uh, when, I, when I taught extensively in the chemistry department, uh, it always helped me to see the faces of the students because it made it a performance as opposed to just going on and on. So um, there's going to be flexibility uh, depending on what, who your professor is and how they want to conduct their class. And you should contact them if you have a special need as to why you cannot do that. Um, but I think in terms of getting good interaction, good discussion with your, with your faculty, it's a good idea to have it on. And if they require it, it should be in the syllabus. So it'd be really clear. Again, if there are special circumstances, challenges, privacy, uh, family members, religious reasons, whatever, uh, contact your faculty member or your assistant dean uh, who works for student affairs but are based in the colleges as part of the success teams to see if they can work out something for you. 
Thank you. And I have a question on the reverse end of that. So other students have contacted us saying, what can I do if my professor only provides pre-recorded lectures and gives us materials to read and I'm struggling to grasp the material on my own? Well, in that case, you need to speak directly to the professor. Um, I can tell you my own son is in a post back program at the campus and uh, he had uh, a situation like that over the summer. It was different for him, but he had to adapt to it. Um, but he knew what he was getting into because that's what it said it would be like in the syllabus. So again, if you have issues with that, you should be looking at your syllabus carefully to see what's being required. Um, and if you need to switch sections or whatever, that's something you might consider uh, to a different modality. But um, nevertheless, always a good idea to express your concern to the professor um, either through uh, Titanium or through uh, Canvas, sorry, uh, either one, or, or through a direct email. They'll respond to you. Great. So I have a question about test taking. Um, so we, we, get a, we, get a, we got a couple of questions from students about, um, you know, their professor has asked them to download Proctorial to record when they take online tests. Um, our students understand the need to, uh, you know, to watch us to make sure that we don't cheat. But some of our students feel like recording is a violation of their privacy. Is there any alternative to this? Uh, right now, um, the Proctorio is, is some, by the way, there's no cost to the students for downloading this. This is so totally borne by the campus. Um, it's something that was vetted by the Chancellor's Office, which is the cohesive head of all the 23 CSU campuses. Um, and and the, we're all committed to student privacy. We, we get that. But that said, we understand that uh, students have specific concerns about recording when they're home because of a variety of reasons. Sometimes it's just not conducive, uh, family members are there, et cetera, it's, or it's a, not, not necessarily an expansive environment. Uh, if that's the case, reach out directly to your professor to discuss your concerns. And also with the, the uh, you can also talk to your assistant deans as well to discuss that, but best to talk directly to the professor. Thank you. Well, that was our final question. And I think a trend that I noticed in a lot of the answers is that they weren't necessarily yes or no. There's a lot of it depends or maybe. And of course, this is a really unique semester. So it's really important, Titans, that you're staying on top of your email, reaching out to your individual professors when you need clarification on these, these items. All the things we discussed today could vary, you know, class by class, professor by professor. So take advantage of those office hours, reach out over email, and just make sure that you're staying in contact with your classmates and professors. Dr. V, Dr. Filowitz, do you have any closing remarks for our students before we log off? Well, I'm grateful for the opportunity to have been invited to participate um, in this webinar. Um, you know, uh, Dr. Vigil and I work very closely together uh, as, as the co-leaders of the campus reentry team. Um, and uh, sometimes I, I call him Jake from State Farm from that TV commercial because uh, he's the one that I get the calls from all day and night. And sometimes my wife says, who is that guy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. We've been working really hard to make certain that, you know, our campus is, is safe for you all. Um, I just wanted to add that if you feel like you're hitting any roadblocks with any of the information that we talked about today, please reach out to the Dean of Students office at deanofstudents at fullerton.edu and we could help direct you to the appropriate person or resource that can help you. So, so thank you for listening to the webinar today. And there's a whole lot of different webinars that we've been putting together um, with the Dean of Students office. So I hope that this isn't the only one that you look at. There's plenty, plenty more. Definitely. On, on that note, we'll say goodbye and we'll see you next time, Titans. Yes.